Is the end of malaria near? Well, not quite, but South African scientists have made a vital breakthrough in a bid to stop the spread of the deadly disease. We've been working at this for about um, five to seven years now already. Um, and we initially had to first establish the technology to be able to do this work in South Africa. To understand this breakthrough, you have to fully understand the malaria parasite and its journey. When a mosquito bites an infected person, a small amount of blood is taken which the malaria parasite is part of. The parasite then changes inside of the mosquito and 12 to 16 days after that infected blood meal, the mosquito is able to bite a person and inject the parasite into them. The parasite then goes to your liver to replicate and can then enter the red blood cells, which results in someone showing symptoms of malaria. But very few parasites can escape and can be transmitted back to another feeding mosquito to spread the disease, even if the human isn't aware. And this is where scientists are hoping to stop the disease dead in its tracks. So these are the forms that can then uh, spread the disease. And it's really important for us if we want to eliminate malaria that we are able to block this transmission cycle. We were really looking for chemical compounds that are able to kill these different forms of the malaria parasite. And what we're excited about now is we're able to identify, in addition to compounds that kill the disease-forming, causing form, also we identified compounds that are able to block this transmission of the parasite from humans back to mosquitoes. This was a joint effort from the University of Pretoria, WITS, UCT, and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, funded by the Medical Research Council. They discovered that chemical compounds that also killed cancer and TB cells in the laboratory also killed the different forms of the malaria parasite. We're not sure what it currently is doing against the malaria parasite. We just have evidence that it kills the parasite. But because these organisms are so different, we have to do the due diligence science and actually figure out what it still does. So basically, the compound's discovery will allow scientists to create a drug that not only kills malaria, but also stops the transmission. So, when an infected mosquito bites a human who's taken the drug, the compounds will kill the parasite. Witts University created a system that artificially infects the mosquitoes with human malaria parasites. They work closely with the University of Pretoria to get the transmittable forms of the malaria parasite to feed to the mosquitoes. And the aim was actually to, to establish a platform where we can look for drugs and compounds that we can use to block transmission within the human and to the mosquito side. And this took a few years just for us to establish the facility to artificially infect mosquitoes and have the system up and running it took us approximately four years. Mosquitoes were fed infected blood that were either treated with or without the compound. And, and for a mosquito to feed, heat is important. So we do feeding at about 37 degrees. Um, so it mimics um, human body temperature. And, and the female normally bites through our skins. And that's the purpose of the membrane that are put onto the feeders. After eight to 10 days, the mosquito's guts were removed and the number of parasites were counted and compared to the mosquito that received no treatment. Research found that if the malaria parasite was exposed to the chemical compound, the parasite could not be transmitted to mosquitoes. So although we have already developed the ability to produce the transmissible forms of the malaria parasite, and we've developed the ability to feed mosquitoes artificially, um, we have to now also develop an animal model for this to prove not only in the lab are we able to do this, but we're also able to do this in animals in the first instance before we um, get any close to venturing into human populations. Current malaria meds for treatment are only taken once a person shows physical symptoms of the disease, which means that the malaria is already in the bloodstream. The problem with the current anti-malarial drugs is, is that they are very good at killing the form that uh, causes symptoms, but they really cannot target these transmissible forms. So they're not very useful for us when we want to look at stopping the spread of the disease. Malaria is a growing concern and killed more than 400,000 people across the world in 2019, with 90% of those fatalities occurring in Africa. 
So it's no surprise that this breakthrough is a massive achievement. Scientists say they are hopeful that these compounds will provide an additional tool in the fight against malaria. Even having said that though, it can take anything up to 10 to 15 years for a compound to pass through all these steps. And you have to also realize that because of the complications and all these checks that we have to do, um, a number of compounds will fail. You can't put, put everything on one compound. You have to start with a number of compounds and hopefully you'll, you'll have one that passes all these thresholds.